In our last session, we looked at the beginning part of the How the Elephant Got His Trunk, also known as the Elephant's Child, and we left it with one question that we needed to think about. And that was whether we thought it was a good thing or a bad thing for a child to have insatiable curiosity, that insatiable curiosity which we said was sort of a greedy thirst for knowledge. And we needed to explain that reason. So pause the video at this point, find someone, and I want you to explain your answer to them. And then come and join me when you're ready. In this session, we're going to be looking at answering the question of how do I summarise the main events in a text. And in order to do this, we're going to be looking at one of the Just So stories. We're going to finish off with the How the Elephant Got Its Trunk story. And we're going to share and explain our opinions of this. Then we're going to understand what a summary actually is. And then we're going to be able to use that knowledge to retrieve some key information from our story to create our own summaries. And let's start by recapping on what has happened so far in the story of how the elephant got his trunk. So, I want you to think about what's happened in the story. So, what does the elephant want to find out and where has he travelled to? And I want you to share that with someone with you. And then come and join me once you've looked at that. So, if you remember from last time, we were looking at the idea of our elephant being very curious about things and the idea that this curiosity kept causing problems he kept getting spanked by the other animals but he was persistent he persevered and kept asking these questions and we left him with his last question which was what does the crocodile eat and in order to answer this question he decided that he needed to travel to the Limpopo River and ask a crocodile himself but unfortunately he didn't actually know what a crocodile looked like he'd never met one but he got pointed in the right direction and we left him just at that last moment. Come hither, little one, said the crocodile, for I am the crocodile. And he wept crocodile tears to show it was quite true. Then the elephant's child grew all breathless and panted and kneeled down on the bank and said, You are the very person I've been looking for all these long days. Will you please tell me what you have for dinner? Come hither, little one, said the crocodile and I'll whisper. So what did you predict happened next in our story? Do you think the elephant moves closer to the crocodile? What do you think could happen? So pause the video, I just want you to recap and look back for your prediction so we can see just how close you are to the original version. So let's continue with our story and find out what happens to the elephant and see whether we get that explanation of how the elephant got his trunk. Come hither, little one, and I'll whisper, said the crocodile. Then the elephant's child put his head down close to the crocodile's musky, tusky mouth, and the crocodile caught him by his little nose, which up to that very week, day, hour and minute had been no bigger than a boot, though much more useful. I think, said the crocodile, and he said it between his teeth like this, I think today... I will begin with Elephant's Child. At this, O oh best beloved, the Elephant's Child was much annoyed, and he said, speaking through his nose like this, Let go, you're hurting me. Then, the bicoloured python rock snake scuffled down from the bank and said, My young friend, if you do not know, immediately and instantly, pull as hard as ever you can. It is my opinion that your acquaintance in the large pattern leather ulster, and by this he meant the crocodile, will jerk you into yonder limpid stream before you can say Jack Robinson. This is the way the bicoloured python rock snakes always talk. Then the elephant's child sat back on his little haunches and pulled and pulled and pulled and his nose began to stretch and the crocodile floundered into the water, making it all creamy with great sweeps of his tail, and he pulled and pulled and pulled. And the elephant's child's nose kept on stretching, and the elephant's child spread all his little four legs and pulled and pulled and pulled, and his nose kept on stretching, and the crocodile threshed his tail like an oar, and he pulled and pulled and pulled, and at each pull, the elephant child's nose grew longer and longer and it hurt him he just then 
the elephant's child felt his leg slipping, and he said through his nose, which was now nearly five feet long, This is too much for me. Then, the bicoloured python rock snake came down from the bank and knotted himself in a double clove hitch round the elephant child's hind legs, and said, Rash and inexperienced traveller, we will now seriously devote ourselves to a little high tension, because, if we do not, it's my impression that yonder self-propelling man of war, with the armour-plated upper deck, and by this our oh best beloved he meant the crocodile, will permanently vitiate your future career. That is the way all bicoloured python rock snakes always talk. So he pulled, and the elephant's child pulled, and the crocodile pulled. But the elephant's child and the bicoloured python rock snake pulled hardest, and at last the crocodile let go of the elephant child's nose with a plop that you could hear all up and down the limpopo. Then the elephant's child sat down most hard and sudden, but first he was careful to say thank you to the bicoloured pipe and rock snake, and next he was kind to his poor pulled nose, and wrapped it all up in cool banana leaves, and hung it in the great grey-green greasy limpopo to cool. What you doing that for? said the bicoloured pipe and rock snake. Excuse me, said the elephant's child, but my nose is badly out of shape, and I'm waiting for it to shrink. And you'll have to wait a long time, said the bicolored python rock snake. Some people do not know what is good for them. The elephant's child sat there for three days, waiting for his nose to shrink. But it never grew any shorter, and besides, it made him squint. For, oh best beloved, you will see and understand that the crocodile had pulled it out into a really trunk, truly trunk, same as an elephant's have today. At the end of the third day, a fly came and stung him on the shoulder, and before he knew what he was doing, he lifted up his trunk and hit that fly dead with the end of it. Vantage number one, said the bicolored python rock snake. You couldn't have done that with a mere smear nose. Try and eat a little now. Before he thought what he was doing, the elephant's child put out his trunk and plucked a large bundle of grass, dusted it clean against his forelegs and stuffed it into his own mouth. Vantage number two, said the bicoloured python rock snake. You couldn't have done that with a mere smear nose. Don't you think the sun is very hot here? It is, said the elephant's child. Before he thought what he was doing, he slooped up a sloop of mud from the banks of a great grey-green greasy limpopo and slapped it on his head, where it made a cool, sloopy, sloshy mud cap all trickly behind his ears. Vantage number three, said the bicoloured python rock snake. You couldn't have done that with that mere smear nose. Now, how do you feel about being spanked again? Excuse me, said the elephant's child, but I should not like it at all. How would you like to spank somebody? said the bicoloured python rock snake. I should like it very much indeed, said the elephant's child. Well, said the bicoloured python rock snake, you'll find the new nose of yours very useful to spank people with. Thank you, said the elephant's child. I remember that. And now I think I'll go home to my dear families and try. So the elephant's child went home across Africa, frisking and whisking his trunk. When he wanted fruit to eat, he pulled the fruit down from a tree, instead of waiting for it to fall as he used to do. When he wanted grass, he plucked grass up from the ground, instead of going on his knees as he used to do. When the flies bit him, he broke off the branch of a tree and used it as a fly whisk, and he made himself a new, cool, slushy, squishy, mud cap whenever the sun was hot. When he felt lonely walking through Africa, he sang to himself down his trunk, and the noise was louder than several brass bands. He went especially out of his way to find a broad hippopotamus, she was no relation of his, and he spanked her very hard to make sure that the bicoloured pipe and rock snake had spoken the truth about his new trunk. The rest of the time, he picked up the melon rinds that he dropped on his way to the limpopo, for he was a tidy pachyderm.
One dark evening, he came back to all his dear families, and he coiled up his trunk and said, How do you do? They were very glad to see him, and immediately said, Come here and be spanked for your satiable courteosity. Pooh, said the elephant's child, I don't think you peoples know anything about spanking. But I do, and I'll show you. Then he uncurled his trunk and knocked two of his dear brothers head over heels. Oh, bananas, said they. Where did you learn that trick? And what have you done to your nose? I got a new one from a crocodile on the banks of a great grey green greasy Limpopo river, said the elephant's child. I asked him what he had for dinner, and he gave me this to keep. It's very ugly, said his hairy uncle, the baboon. It does, said the elephant's child. But he's very useful, and he picked up his hairy uncle, the baboon, by one hairy leg, and hove him into a hornet's nest. Then that bad elephant's child spanked all his dear families for a long time, till they were very warm and greatly astonished. He pulled out his tall ostrich ant's tail feathers, and he caught his tall uncovered giraffe by the hind leg, and dragged him through the thorn bush, and he shouted at his broad ant the hippopotamus, and blew bubbles into her ear when she was sleeping in the water after meals. But he never let anyone touch Colo Colo Bird. At last things grew so exciting, that his dear families went off one by one in a hurry to the banks of that great grey-green greasy Limpopo river, all set about with fever trees to borrow new no noses from the crocodile. When they came back, nobody spanked anybody any more, and ever since that day, O oh best beloved, all the elephants you will ever see, besides all those you won't, have trunks precisely like the trunk of a satiable elephant's child. So let's pause for a moment there. Think about the story from the last session and this. And think, did you like the outcome of the story? What are your opinions and why, why are you thinking that? Pause the video, have a little think, share your ideas and come and join me when you're ready. Thank you, said the elephant's child. I remember that. And now I think I'll go home to my dear families and try. So the elephant's child went home across Africa, frisking and whisking his trunk. When he wanted fruit to eat, he pulled the fruit down from a tree, instead of waiting for it to fall as he used to do. When he wanted grass, he plucked grass up from the ground, instead of going on his knees as he used to do. When the flies bit him, he broke off the branch of a tree and used it as a fly whisk, and he made himself a new, cool, slushy, squishy mud cap whenever the sun was hot. When he felt lonely walking through Africa, he sang to himself down his trunk, and the noise was louder than several brass bands. He went especially out of his way to find a broad hippopotamus, she was no relation of his, and he spanked her very hard to make sure that the bicoloured python rock snake had spoken the truth about his new trunk. The rest of the time, he picked up the melon rinds that he dropped on his way to the limpopo, for he was a tidy pachyderm. One dark evening, he came back to all his dear families, and he coiled up his trunk and said, How do you do? They were very glad to see him, and immediately said, Come here and be spanked for your satiable courteosity. Pooh, said the elephant's child, I don't think you peoples know anything about spanking. But I do, and I'll show you. Then he uncurled his trunk and knocked two of his dear brothers head over heels. Oh, bananas, said they. Where did you learn that trick? And what have you done to your nose? I got a new one from a crocodile on the banks of a great grey green greasy Limpopo river, said the elephant's child. I asked him what he had for dinner, and he gave me this to keep. It's very ugly, said his hairy uncle, the baboon. It does, said the elephant's child. But he's very useful, and he picked up his hairy uncle, the baboon, by one hairy leg, and hove him into a hornet's nest. Then that bad elephant's child spanked all his dear families for a long time, till they were very warm and greatly astonished. He pulled out his tall ostrich ant's tail feathers, and he caught his tall uncovered giraffe by the hind leg, and dragged him through the thorn bush, and he shouted at his broad ant the hippopotamus, and blew bubbles into her ear when she was sleeping in the water after meals. But he never let anyone touch Colo Colo Bird. At last things grew so exciting, 
but his dear families went off one by one in a hurry to the banks of that great grey-green greasy Limpopo river all set about with fever trees to borrow new no noses from the crocodile when they came back nobody spanked anybody any more and ever since that day o oh best beloved all the elephants you will ever see besides all those you won't have trunks precisely like the trunk of a satiable elephant's child so let's pause for a moment there think about the story from the last session and this and think did you like the outcome of the story what are your opinions and why why are you thinking that pause the video have a little think share your ideas and come and join me when you're ready So in this session, our independent activity is going to be to write a summary of how the elephant got his trunk. So the very first thing we're going to think about is what actually is a summary? Well, quite simply, a summary is a shortened version of a text, and it should contain certain things. It should be written in your own words, so you're not going to necessarily try and write word for word what the original text was saying. You're going to say the things that pop into your head. It's only going to contain key points or main events. The important thing in this is because it's written in your own words, it's what you think are the key points of the main events. So someone else might actually disagree, but it doesn't really matter. However, you're not going to include any personal opinions. This isn't a review. You're not telling me whether you liked the story or not. You're simply telling me what happens in that story. And in order to allow yourself to have as much detail as possible, you've got to be thinking about the who, what, where, why, when, and how, the five W's of the events to give me that detail that I need. So I need to know who was involved in it, what they did, where it took place, why they did that certain thing, when they did that certain thing, and how it happened. So once you're telling me those five W's for all those key points in your own words, then you're summarising that story. So if, for example, we took the very beginning part of this story, the very start of how the elephant got his trunk. We can use these questions to help guide us on what we should include. So at the very beginning, we've got who are the main characters. Well, we've got the elephant child, but we've also got the other animals that live in his family. So the ostrich, the giraffe, the hippopotamus, the baboon. Now, what is the main event? Well, the main event that's happening at this beginning bit is the elephant child keeps asking lots of questions. Where does it take place? Well, this takes place in Africa, from what we're told. And when? Well, we're told it's in high and far off time, so a long time ago. How and why does it happen? Well, again, he's satiable courtesy. He's a very curious, very sort of knowledge-thirsty elephant who's asking these questions. And what's the final question? Well, he's getting spanked constantly. So when we're looking at doing this as a summary, we can use those five ideas to tell us what's happened. So a long time ago, there was a really curious elephant child, and he kept going around Africa to all the different animals, asking them questions, and they were getting sick and tired of it, so they kept spanking him, but he didn't give up. He carried on asking questions. That's the opening bit in my own words. That's what a summary is going to look for. So now you're ready to create your own summary. What you're going to think about firstly is think about those key events that happen in this story. Try and get it down to about four or five key events and then think about these five questions. So who is involved in this event? Where and when do this event take place? What is the main event that happens? What actually happens? And then how does that take place and why does it happen? So think about those, saying it in your own words, then write them down to enable you to create your own detailed summary of how the elephant got his trunk. So, off you go now. Good luck, and I look forward to reading your summaries.